Hello, my name is Jim Downs and I'm a field specialist in forestry. Today I'm back down in Hawking County on some private woodland acres to introduce multiflora rose. Multiflora rose is probably the most common non-native invasive plant that we have all across Ohio. It's actually found all across the United States. And this was originally brought over to the United States in the late 1860s to use for rootstock for other ornamental roses. Later in the 1920s to 1930s, the United States Soil Conservation Service began to recommend planting multiflora rose for erosion control efforts, as well as to promote what were referred to as living fences. The idea was multiflora rose can grow in very dense thickets and become very, very difficult to pass through. And the idea was if you could plant these along property edges or along the edges of fields, it would perhaps keep cattle from passing through those areas and negate the need to constantly build fence. However, multiflora rose, while it will form those very dense thickets, it didn't stay in those thickets and it readily spread all across of much of the United States. To identify multiflora rose, we're looking at a bramble, so it will have these curved arching canes or the stems that will be green. Towards the end, they will be somewhat of a zigzag pattern to them. The leaves themselves are alternate. They will contain somewhere between five and 11 leaflets per leaf. Most commonly, there will be seven to nine leaflets. The edges of those leaves will be finely serrated. Along the cane or along the stem, you will have these very noticeably curved thorn-like prickles on there. And those, because these thorns are curved, they do a, a very excellent job of grabbing onto things, especially people in clothing as you were to try to pass by the multiflora floor rows because they curve an angle into what they're uh, touching. The fruit of multiflora rose is a rose hip, uh, which is a small berry-like uh, fruit, usually a little bit larger than an eighth inch around in diameter, maybe a little bit longer than that, maybe somewhat of a, um, a teardrop shape. They are very high in vitamin C and actually will persist some through the winter months, although most of the, the fruit will be consumed in the fall. As I mentioned, multiflora rose is very common across the entirety of the state of Ohio. It's actually very difficult to find woodland areas where you do not have multiflora rose because it is readily spread by both wind and by songbirds. Where you will most commonly see multiflora rose is growing in areas that have an abundance of sunshine reaching the forest floor, such as the area that I have back here behind me, which this woodland experienced some death of ash as well as some locust. Um, in recent years, as a result of those trees dying, it allowed a lot of sunlight to reach the, the forest floor. And once that happened, a lot of this multiflora rose began to grow very, very dense. Now, multiflora rose would have been here in this stand prior to those trees dying, but it would not have been nearly as thick or nearly as green. One of the reasons why I created this video this time of year, which it's getting to be the end of March right now, is because during early springtime, there's often a short window of time in which many of the non-native invasive species have leafed out and most of our native plants remain dormant and such is the case of this time of year right now and which what that does is that can give landowners an ideal time of year to do some foliar applications of pesticides to be particularly impactful on the multiflora rose and have less of an impact upon native vegetation which are not leafed out yet as you can see here um, the, the understory, under, what is growing underneath this multiflora rose, is very sparse. Actually, most of what is actually underneath the multiflora rose right in this area is actually smaller multiflora rose or Japanese honeysuckle. So the likelihood of doing some type of damage with a, a herbicide right now is somewhat lessened.
However, care should be taken when selecting a herbicide. Ohio State University Extension has a number of different fact sheets dedicated to controlling non-native invasive species, and I would highly encourage you to check out one of those before attempting to treat multiflora rose on your own property, or better yet, get the advice of a forester or natural resources professional on specifics for controlling invasive species on your property. One of the interesting things that you will see sometimes on multiflora rose is something referred to as rose rosette disease. This is actually a fairly unique disease. It's actually a virus, so it is a viral disease, and it is actually spread by very tiny, actually microscopic mites that overwinter and live in and around the buds of multiflora rose, but what it primarily does is it, it will kill individual stems of multiflora rose. However, it is not likely to be a significant control to multiflora rose, so you're not going to see uh, stands of multiflora rose dying as a result of this uh, viral disease. But what you will tend to see is some very red new growth, as well as a red reddish tint to the leaves, and you'll actually see a a lot of uncontrolled growth. So instead of having just a few leaflets growing out of a particular location, you may see a number of leaves because there is some of that uncontrolled growth uh, being caused by that virus. So rose rosette disease is a viral pathogen uh, that can be transmitted to ornamental roses. So it does live harbor in uh, our woodland areas and therefore some folks who are very interested in maintaining uh, ornamental roses in their landscapes may have issues with multiflora rose coming from the woodlands uh, around those areas and harboring the viral disease to those ornamental roses. And with that, thank you for watching and have a great day.